So we're about to jump into the 15 degree water. This size? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than chicken pate. Well, we've had summer, autumn, and winter. We're just waiting for spring now. <laughs> a bit windier than expected. Welcome to Free Range Sailing. Join us as we sail around Australia, visiting its wild places in our 30 foot, 50 year old sailing boat, Marul. Living off the land and sea while sailing a yacht that costs less than a new car, we show that it's possible to have big adventures with a seaworthy boat on a very modest budget. After crossing Bass Strait, we had made our home at Babel Island, and now it was time to sort out dinner. The scariest part of diving, fighting with my wetsuit. So we're about to jump into the 15 degree water. Got my full wetsuit on see what this cold tazzy water is going to give to us. One of Tasmania's favourite fish is the humble flathead. They also go by the nickname of lizards and here you can see why. They rely on camouflage and stealth to catch their prey and as a result they have firm white meat and a very subtle flavour. We had expected the southern fish to be drab compared to their tropical cousins. These leather jacket proved us quite wrong. What did you think of that pesky? <laughs> that was pretty, um, pretty quick feed. <laughs> Quite an easy way to get a feed. So we got a couple of southern sand flatties. Um, one of the one of the things about sailing around, apart from the wind, is that you might not necessarily have um, the local knowledge with regards to fisheries and stuff like that. Especially since well, neither of us have really spent any time on the water in Tasmania. So. We've, yeah, we've never been to Tassie before. Yeah. So oftentimes it's a bit of a headache to find um, like the legislation regarding, like we live on fish, so we sort of need to stay within the law. And since we've come here, Pascal found a pretty easy way to do it. You found like the, an yeah, app for fisheries Yeah, so the Tasmanian that. government put out a fishing app, Southern uh, Tasmanian fishing app, and it's really great. It gives you all of the maximum minimum size um, for a fish and the size limits for um, shellfish, abalone, Lobster. Yep. Is this size? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone that hasn't really caught flathead before, just right here on the side where they where that cheek terminates, they've got a couple of spikes there, and they're actually um, they've got a, a poisonous a poisonous slime on there, and it will make you hurt like crazy. And if you do get spiked by a flathead, hot water will sort you out because it's a protein based poison. With these flathead, um, I'm just giving them a scrub with a brush. We've found that. A lot of fish like coral trout up north, we could remove the scales really easily just with a scrubbing brush. And I thought I'd try it with these flatties. Um, and it, it just pulled the scales off <laughs> just super quick. So now when I fill it up, we won't have to take the skin off because we like eating the fish skin. Um, it's nice and crispy. So a quick scrub got rid of the slime, it got rid of the scales. 
and that's uh, that's all good stuff. Part of what we like to do is uh, maximise the recovery we get from every fish. You know, we don't want to. We try not to waste um, any if we can. So let's see what Pascal's up to at the moment. Fish liver pate. What? So I just whipped up some, fried up some of the flathead livers. I'm going to try and make pate, similar to the pate that I make with chicken livers, but I'll try it with fish this time. <laughs> It's better than chicken pate. I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. It's pretty good. If you like seafood. But it's not even that seafoody. I can't tell that that's from a fish. I can, but it's only mild. With my new Sydney purchase, it was on special. A bar mix. Because all my other food processors died. And I wanted to get something strong and reliable with a 30 year warranty. Heavy is reliable. Heavy is reliable. That's how you do it. Running it through a sieve. Yeah, getting all the lumps out. You can really see the lumps in there, like the bits of sinew and the onion. Is that the container you're going to use just to set it in the fridge? Yep. We've got these row, or they might even be sperm sacks from inside the uh oh inside the flathead. So I'm going to try some of these out. Hey, do they look grainy or do they look creamy? They look. I don't know. Oh my god. That's definitely row because that's orange. This one's definitely row because it's orange. Mm. And I think I'm going to cut the membrane away and try and make something out of the row. But I want to just try these. What are you putting in there now? Brandy. Maybe. Are you going to set it on fire? I, I don't think there's enough um, alcohol in there. Oh, Jesus. Mmm. Really nice. Really, really good. I think you're going to love it. It's it? like, it like, tastes like fish, like eating fish fillet, but intensified, hmm. like fish flavour intensified. I think that's right, because you can see the little grains, individual. Mm. It's not that creamy, spoogy stuff mm. from the mackerel. It's really yummy. Mm. No, I still think it's roe. No, I mean sperm. Because it's it was a bit creamy, like this bit that wasn't cooked is creamy. Whereas the roe's got more eggs. So here's this creamy bit. Try the creamy bit. Pascal thinks I'm living in denial. That you're eating sperm. It's not the same as that, that mackerel one we ate. Okay. It's grainy. Okay. It's not sperm. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as lunch was over, we had to move to find shelter from a developing westerly. What about one of the facts? We almost slowly drowning in sand I wanna be an example How to feel a space between the shadows And we suffer in it We're passed by the atoms And we suffer Well, we're starting the new year with a sail down the eastern side of Flinders Island and it's just beautiful conditions. It's really amazing. We're starting 2020 the right way. We are starting 2020 the right way. Yesterday was uh, pretty strong winds and still a bit of swell. So we waited till today to head, head down Flinders Island and go check out a bit further south. I'm seeing a few fish archers on the sounder. I'm tempted to throw a Betsy out. I think that's a good idea. I'm going to go get have the fishing got, rod. Have we got room in the fridge? Yeah. <laughs> we definitely got room for kingfish. Oh, I don't know if we've got kingies out here. What do you reckon we get out here? Beach. I don't know. We're just 
give it a go. Let's just see. Yeah, okay. There's some nice structure there. Yeah. If we were a bottom fisherman, I would I would be fishing here. <laughs> The old Betsy. Let me just put some of the sunglasses on before I start playing with the lure. It's a shame they don't actually make them like they used to. Yeah, the ones we were using like three years ago in WA were a bit different. They had like a silver body, so when the paint started to chip off, it was just a silver fish, so you still had the silver fish and swimming and moving and making the noise. And we're not sure about these ones. They're pink underneath and they don't seem to be as effective, but it might be just because we're in the East Coast. Who knows? Part of, um, part of cruising is getting used to things that you're not used to. <laughs> <laughs> if that makes any sense. Getting outside of your comfort zone and at the moment uh, for us or at least for me it's parking in open roadsteads you know like where we're we're just off a beach um, we're getting shelter from the the westerly wind sure but we're we're just totally open to the ocean swells and at the moment they're about one and a half to two meters so we're sailing along now and you know I can get a look at it but you know there's waves breaking on shore it, it just feels totally exposed to us. I'm, I'm sure we'll get used to it. But we've been using a lot of anchor road. Um, so we've got 30 metres of chain backed up by 100 metres of 14mm uh, nylon. So we've been putting all the chain out, so 30 metres. But because we've been anchoring in 8 metre water um, with another 3 metres of tide that we have to factor in, you know, we've been, we've been throwing in another 20 to 30 metres of nylon road after that. Um, to give ourselves enough scope, to give ourselves enough to line out. That amount of um, nylon that's been out, that's, that's just a huge shock absorber, so we haven't felt any shocks or anything like that. With the swells, we were walking around on the anchor a little bit, but no big dramas, but like I say, it is something that we're having to get used to. And I guess when people go cruising, it's just <laughs> day after day, you're just getting used to new stuff all the time, you know? So it's quite a nice aspect of it, but it, just something you have to have to come to terms with. Don't go cruising if you don't like change, if you can't adapt to change. Pasky reckons don't go cruising if you can't adapt to change and she's had to adapt a fair bit. My mercurial moods. <laughs> <laughs> Summer, autumn, and winter. I'm just waiting for spring now. <laughs> Things are posted here. I'm pretty glad that when we left, we left with a reef in the main. This, might, this, might be our MO while we're in Tassie because of the gusts. We had been used to stronger winds announcing themselves in advance with mare tail clouds, but here we were getting sudden winds with what looked like a very settled sky. through the passage. Not today. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. You'd save time by motoring in here I guess but why well, would you? <laughs> we need to save some fuel anyway. Yeah we've only got 14 litres left so well we think 14 litres. But we do only have six miles to drive so yeah we've got reserve. Yeah so we're gonna go into the little township 
of Lady Baron on Flinders Island and get some fuel there. Fingers crossed. Plan attack. What I should have said is I'm going to make a mess of that tack. Because the camera's rolling. Because the camera's rolling. <laughs> Feels calmer. Yeah, I don't want to go too much more shallow though. So get ready on that anchor, will you? Yep. Anchoring under sail isn't really difficult, but you do want to get it right the first time. Alright, Pesky, we're going to. Um this anchorage is just, it's going to be a nightmare if we stay here all night, there is good for a break. Mm. But now that the tide's right, what we'll do is we'll, um, we'll go up and we'll, we'll take the southern passage into Franklin Sound. The, this, the, the lead, the leads uh, that takes part is hot boil, I can't get my words out at the moment. It's a bit tired. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the main leads in, it'd just be a mess because of this wind and tide and everything else like that. But on this one we'll get shelter by the land just there. We should be able to work our way in. By the time we pop out of the channel it might be a bit messy in the in the sound. But I'm hoping when we get there it'll be quite close to slack tide so we won't have a wind on tide. And it certainly won't be racing through there at three knots. So. And then we'll go to Dog Island. Dog Island? Dog. There was a bit of uncertainty with this passage, so it was life jackets on for the both of us. The wind would be bending onto our nose around the land, so we ran our engine as there wouldn't be room for tacking in the passage. We still run with a sail though for stability and in case of engine failure. This was a tight passage and not a good place to go aground. There was already one very weather beaten wreck and we didn't feel like adding another. Anxiety inducing, was it? No, because I guess if the engine conked out or something happened, we would have just turned around. It would have been annoying, but. <laughs> was it anxiety inducing for you? Just frustrating. Getting no, wet. I wasn't, I wasn't anxious. Just getting angry. I sound like getting salt spray in my eyes. How come did you become a sailor? I didn't think about that when I became a sailor. <laughs> You're not supposed to get salt spray in your eyes. That's a motorboat thing. <laughs> when you're sailing, you're supposed to just be enjoying yourself and lounging around and drinking daiquiris. Uh, no. Uh, no. So we're going to make it to dog under sail? Or we're going to have to turn we're the engine on. Yes. It's um, it's real sailing country. This isn't it. There's no, no free lunches. <laughs> After a night's rest, it was time to head into town and see if we could find some diesel fuel, a shower, and perhaps a cold beer. We sail under headsail only, as we often do when we think we may have to manoeuvre in tight spaces under sail. Run away! Run away! 
Oh, shallow. <laughs> oh yeah, it looks shallow. I was looking at the thing and I was like, gee, that looks really yellow. shallow. Oh yeah, it's all shoal. Yeah. The chart says that that's a reasonable depth, so it's sort of like the chart lied. Chart lied to us again. So I think we'll just sail sail by Polaroid rather than even looking at that chart. I think I'll just keep an eye on the sounder and um judgment. Well done Troy. Just call me Brave Sir Robin. After that close call I thought I'd keep a good look out at the mast for any other uncharted shell ground. You bug it up and chicken down. Get in and packing it up and sneaking away and buggering off and chickening out and pissing up home. Yes, bravely, he is flowing in the barn. Oh, that's better. It's an actual visual leads. <laughs> the old two two triangles pointing towards each other. I'm much happier than that than some uh, some chart. I think we should just sell our mainsail, get rid of the boom. We're almost, we're almost close hauled. We're on a very, very close reach at the moment. Just come to head side. Whoa! Uh, what a boat. Yeah, well, it's fine when we're not in swell. <laughs> we, we would actually be going faster with the mainsail. This is when it feels like we're we're not in a cruising boat, we're in a a dinghy. <laughs> when you can just be sitting in the cockpit like this, which is awesome. That's why this is a good choice for these coastal cruising and exploring. All these people are like, oh you need a larger boat. Oh. Well one day. <laughs> just not now. Oh, look at that sky. That's amazing. Yeah. I got some pictures oh, of the sky. Yeah. We didn't see Mare's Tales yesterday, even though it was really windy. Yeah, you shoot up past the hit sound now. Oh. All right. Where are we? At the shower room. It's literally a shower room. But it's a free hot shower at the Ferno Tavern. It's exciting. So I haven't washed my hair in like, I figured it out, I haven't washed my hair in two weeks. So this is pretty exciting for me. Jump in the shower. With our hair washed and a cold drink in hand, it was time to sit back and take in the incredible view. Thanks for tuning in this week. Also, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel as it really helps our videos get recommended to a wider audience.